there she is. This is the motor of the future, ladies and gentlemen. Runs on air and water. This is the most basic of the Stirling engines. Some call it a thermal acoustic Stirling engine or a lamina flow Stirling engine. We're just going to call it a single piston Stirling engine today. There's the flywheel, the piston, the drive shaft, and the bearings. We're going to generate electrical power with that today. And I know that's small, but in the future we're going to make them a lot larger. And if there's one you guys can copy, it's definitely this one. It's very basic. I'm going to break it down for you so you can see what's inside. It's going to power the future home. And the home in the future is going to be powered by hydrogen. It's going to be tax free. There's going to be no wires connected to it. It's not going to have any meter hooked to the side of the home. It's going to be powered by water. It's going to have no carbon footprint. And to be completely environmentally friendly. It'll have so much energy and power that you'll have to release it or give it away to your neighbors. See, in a non-renewable energy is right here. This is a non-renewable resource. A substance that was made a long time ago that is no longer being made. So it's foolish to have something like, like oil, nuclear, coal, or anything like that that you can only dig out of the ground one time and use it. That makes no sense. So this is where water comes in, in the hydrogen fuel cell. Think about that. So these are renewable energy, sunlight, rocks, water, wind. So we're going to get into that. And what's at stake here? Let me show you. Every living life form that you can think of. See, if we don't switch over to a hydrogen society where everything's powered by water, we're going to lose all this. There's something to think about. You know, this is the biosphere that keeps us alive. So we're going to generate some electrical power with this thing. And remember, the only difference is quantity. You make a larger one, you can make and generate more electrical power. And all matter has electrical properties. Don't forget that. Every home will be powered by a pulsar reactor and you'll be able to see it from space. And we'll have these things a lot larger running in the backyard. And what's cool about these, they can run 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So you can power the home on HHO, hydrogen gas. It's wildlife friendly, think about that. And this works on the atoms too. This works on the ambient air gas atoms. That's how this works. That piston from the heating and the contracting and the expanding of ambient air or whatever gas you put in here. You could put hydrogen, helium. And it's a very simple motor. A lot of us are going to be able to copy this. People do all the time. You just got to build one a little larger. 
So you got 12 volts or 24 volts with a few amps. And it's really sad because the average sheeple has no idea that you're living on a water-powered planet. The entire thing is just one giant gas station of hydrogen, the most simplest element on the table of elements. And once these snakes and these non-renewable energies get their hands on your home, you're screwed. You're basically screwed. You might as well give it up. See, non-renewable energy, you're just getting screwed the whole time. It's horrible. The poor sheep has no idea that the water's fuel. You could be generating your own electrical power. So it really is a never-ending cycle. Energy just changes forms from one type to the next. And these little motors do a really good job at that. You can see my DC motor generator on the back there. It's hooked up to this model. So I've taken it apart so you can see the serviceable parts for this model. It's very simple. There's the flywheel, the driving rod, and the piston. And that's it. I mean, it's that easy. These things can put out a very high RPM. They're easy to build and easy to replace. Remember I told you guys, these things are easy to fix parts if something breaks. See how I broke this piston right here. And I was able to replace it very quickly with my replacement parts. It just took me a minute to break it back down and put it back together again. So you gotta remember the Stirling engine when it comes to fuel, you can use concentrated solar energy to run this. And if you want, you can use straw, wood, sawdust, cardboard, discarded Christmas trees, or any other combustible fuel source or substance you can imagine. There's nothing to it.
you look in my book here, you can see over the years they've had many designs. Many different designs. This was really popular, the Coco fan. It was a non-electric fan. So you know, if we had some of these today available to us right now, I could run my hydrogen fuel cells. I could run a Hoffman apparatus, start mixing and storing gases if I wanted to. I could separate gases. So think about that, if you had a few hundred watts, you know, you're able to power this uh, popcorn wagon back in the day. It should put out enough power to make some HHO gas. Now I could run this motor on HHO gas. This is a very oxidized flame right here of hydrogen. That's hydrogen and oxygen mixed together. But I'm going to show you why I'm not running this on an HHO flame because it has a glass cylinder. And you can run these motors on HHO gas but you got to have that stainless steel cylinder on the end. That's why I didn't run this one on. HHO gas because watch what happens when it comes in contact with glass. Burn a hole right through it. So if you think about this, the atoms are dancing, the energy to power all the atoms and their gyroscopic motions. Think about this, like on the old motors and the engines, when they were running balls out, they reached a state of equilibrium. And the motor was running at its top speed at that point. Now the molecules in the atoms are no different. I'm going to show you guys in another video how to reach resonance in a water fuel cell. I'm going to show you how the temperature has a lot to do with that. And the speed of the atoms, remember heat is just a measurement of how fast the molecules are moving. So this motor is not to be overlooked, it runs off the atoms themselves. So if you think about it, these atoms have a mind of their own. They have a native intelligence given to them by gods. Think about this, given to them by the Creator. So they know what to do under certain conditions. Just like you or I, they have a native intelligence. So they didn't teach you that in school, did they? See the gyroscopic motions that keep these atoms spinning in their equilibriums. The energy is coming from elsewhere. It's coming from somewhere else in the universe. So what powers these atoms? They pull it in through the proton, through leptons, gluons. There's energy pathways deep down inside of the proton. We'll get into that in another video. But I hope that helps you cover the basic, basic Sterling engine.